4.6 practice problems. Potassium hydrogen phthalate, P KHP, is used as a primary standard for determining the concentration of a solution of sodium hydroxide in, uh, by titration. If KHP has not been dried before weighing, the calculated molarity of the sodium hydroxide would be. So if KHP is not dried, that means that it's going to still have some water in it, and so therefore the weight will be higher, meaning that it will look like more moles of KHP were required to uh, go ahead and <clears throat> uh, neutralize the uh, sodium hydroxide, thereby making it look like it's a higher uh, molality or molarity of the um, sodium hydroxide. So that would be answer choice A. Um, we are going to have a higher molarity of uh, sodium hydroxide because it looks like we needed more moles of KHP in order to uh, satisfy that reaction. In the titration experiment, hydrogen peroxide reacts with um, aqueous permanganate as represented by the equation above. The dark purple uh, potassium permanganate solution is added from a burette into a, color, uh, a colorless acidified solution of hydrogen peroxide in an Erlenmeyer flask. Note, at the end point of the titration, the solution should be a pale pink color. Which of the following best describes what happens to the pH of the um, hydrogen peroxide solution as the titration uh, proceeds? So as we go through, we can see that we have um, the um, hydrogen peroxide plus the permanganate and the acid that we have here. And we are getting out some uh, manganese, ions, water, and oxygen. So the acid is being removed during this process. And uh, so uh, we should become uh, less acidic as the, uh, hi the hydrogen ions are consumed and therefore our pH should increase. So that is option choice C. So it's often a mistake for students to think that acids are a high pH. However, uh, this is not the case. It is in fact the inverse. So pHs are below seven, meaning uh, if pHs are below seven, that means it is acidic. If pH is above seven, it is basic. And so as I consume hydrogen ions, I am becoming less acidic and more basic and therefore my pH um, increases. When a burette is rinsed before a titration, which of the following techniques is best for the procedure? Uh, so when you rinse uh, the burette, you are wanting to clean out the burette from anything that you had before and then also to make sure that the burette is um, like any leftover solution that is in the burette is what you are going to be titrating with so that you do not affect the molarity of what you are titrating with. So I'm going to look that I am going to rinse the burette at least twice. So that eliminates option choice A and B. Um, Option choice C says I wash it twice, which is good. Once with the titrant solution, that's good. Then once with distilled water, uh, that's not gonna be good. That's going to watch, wash out my titrant solution and that could mess with my molarity. Rinse the burette two times, each time with some titrant solution. That is going to be best practice there. And then rinse the burette two times, each with distilled water. Uh, that could mess with my molarity. So option choice D is going to be my best choice for um, making sure that my burette is uh, clean and does not mess with the molarity of my concentration. A particle view of a sample of hydrogen peroxide is shown opposite. The hydrogen peroxide is titrated with potassium permanganate as represented in the equation below. Which of the following particle views best represents the mixture when the titration is halfway to equivalence point? Water and hydrogen ions are not shown. So a uh, halfway to equivalence point means that I should see both um, reactants and products um, present within uh, my solution. So I am dealing with some um, 
uh, hydrogen peroxide, acid, and I should still see some uh, uh, manganese and oxygen. So um, here I see uh, manganese and hydrogen peroxide. I don't see oxygen at all or um, uh, any of my other reactants. So that doesn't quite make sense. Uh, here I have a lot of uh, permanganate and uh, some manganeses here. Um, no oxygens, no, uh, no acid, no nothing. Um, I have a lot of permanganate and let's see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So um, I should have, if I'm halfway to equivalence point, um, I'm looking at about uh, half of my uh, peroxide should be gone. So this is a little bit less. This is, um, we're starting to see the um, uh, halfway here, and we have our uh, product of the uh, manganese being present. Here we have the permanganate, the hydroxide, and uh, just one uh, manganese there. So um, I'm going to be choosing option choice C. I need to be halfway to equivalence point, which means that I am going to be looking to decrease uh, my amount of uh, hydrogen peroxide by approximately half. This is uh, half. And then I also need uh, products on my other side. Um, as well as my reactant, so reactant being the peroxide and products being the manganese, that's going to be option choice C. A student pipetted five 25 milliliter samples of hydrochloric acid and transferred each sample uh, to an Erlenmeyer flask, diluted it with distilled water and added a few drops of phenolphthalein to each. Each sample was then titrated with a sodium hydroxide solution to the appearance of the first uh, permanent faint pink color. The following results were obtained. Volumes of sodium hydroxide solution were 35.22 mils, 36.14 mils, 36.13 mils, 35.15 mils, and 36.12 mils. Which of the following is the most probable explanation for the variation in the student's result? Um, so I should uh, have my volumes of um, uh, sodium hydroxide be the uh, same and pretty close to the same throughout. I have an outlier here and so that's what we're looking for a possible um, problem. So if I uh, uh, needed less sodium hydroxide than um, the rest of them, it means that I had less hydrochloric acid than um, I should have in that first trial. So I'm going to look for an explanation for something about um, why I could potentially have less hydrochloric acid in that first trial when um, we were pipetting uh, with hydrochloric acid. So uh, the burette was not washed with sodium hydroxide. That would explain why I would have uh, more, not less, because that would have lowered the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. Student misread five of this uh, a five or a six on the burette for the first sample when it was titrated, that still wouldn't have gotten it in line with um, all of the rest of the sample. Uh, a different amount of water was added to the first sample. Um, doesn't say more or less. Um, and uh, that's just not like a great solution. Uh, we need it to be that it is a uh, lower concentration of uh, hydrochloric acid here, so lower moles. Pipette was not rinsed with hydrochloric acid. That is a, a good possible solution because that could mean that there was uh, distilled water, there was something in there um, that lowered the uh, molarity of the hydrochloric acid. And the uh, student added too little, too little indicator to the first sample. Again, um, that's not necessarily going to lower the molarity of my hydrochloric acid. So option choice D is going to be my best choice there.